The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. We have Mike from Chicago on the line, and he has a question about digestion. Hi, Mike. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday. First of all, I just wanted to say that I love the show. I think it's uh, it's great programming, and I'm very much of a like mind when it comes to you know taking control of your own health and certainly doing your own research. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Welcome to the show, everybody. Happy Friday, and it's uh, Friday the 7th already of June, right? It is. It's so good to be back. Yeah, I miss you. I miss you, too. <laughs> I, you know, you've been gone for two weeks, right? Exactly. Yeah, yep. and I was gone last week. Uh, had a little function with my wife down in Boca Raton. Mm -hmm. And I was in Austria, yeah. and it was beautiful as it is, but it rained the entire time. Really? And it had this beautiful spring weather. We were kind of excited about that. Uh -huh. And uh, then they had this rain, and uh, for the seven, eight days I was there, it rained. Wow. Finally, the sun came out the last day. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got But you know they're day. having that 100-year flood over there. Uh, yeah, now they're Yeah, kind of. Yeah. God, we missed that. We might, not have, we might not have been home for another week. Yeah, we had some flooding here yesterday, too. Uh, we had the storm going through. Not too bad. Some high winds, though. I was sitting on my back porch for about an hour, and then all of a sudden the wind, one of those squalls went through, and... Uh, I went back inside, but... Uh, well, we're certainly having nice green spring everywhere because of all the beautiful water. Beautiful out now. Mm -hmm. God, it's uh, all past this by, so uh, good luck up north with uh, that uh, storm coming through. Okay, we have our Health Signals newsletter, and uh, I'd like to remind you that the number here is 877-927-6648. And downtown Clearwater, it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, so come on down to Florida and enjoy yourself. And uh, my Health Signals newsletter is out. i got a brand new one out. We're going to talk a little bit about what's in there and then uh, go on from there. The first thing on their uh, page, is that the cholesterol drugs can actually cut the benefits of exercise. Okay, so that doesn't really surprise me, mm -hmm. that article, but it's really got some great information because, folks, this is the situation. All drugs stop enzyme reactions, and life is enzyme reactions. And it gets into the detail about how it's actually in the mitochondria, the energy station of every cell, um, there's just a lower energy output, and these enzymes are stopped. Um, you've heard, we've talked about this before, but um, anyone that is on a statin should absolutely be on CoQ10. Hey, where do we get our CoQ10 yeah. from? From meat. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> so, so CoQ10 is a uh, natural nutrient that we get when we eat meat. Um, and when you are on a statin, most physicians in Europe would never dream of putting someone on a statin without a CoQ10. Now, my personal feeling, and I'm not a medical doctor, as you know, is that there's not really an indication for statins. I mean, unless there's some real strong familia, but only your doctor can determine that. Well, and if you've had a heart attack in the past, then... Well, for men, they've proven mm -hmm. that, that statins can be beneficial yeah. in men that have already previously had a heart attack, but that's kind of an indication that there are other things going on there sure. that's, you know... Going, going, going on. Going on for a long time. Statins have never been proven effective for women in any case. Wow. But, uh, but there was a new study that was published online in the Journal of American College of Cardiology that really looked at some very distressing things that showed that people that were on statins, same group, one on statins, one not on statins, and exercise, the group on statins did not receive benefit from their exercise. In fact, they had a decrease. So, so just remember that, folks. If, uh, if your doctor is suggesting statins, make sure you're... Uh, providing the CoQ10. They don't actually mention that, but I'm, that's what I'm letting you know is one of the nutrients that yeah, really needs to be it. there. Well, one of the things about any drug is uh, it stops your body from functioning in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, so any kind of drug that you take is not going to be beneficial. It fixes you. one problem but creates another. Right. And Dr. Brownstein, you know, you've heard me talk about him. He's one of the iodine yeah. doctors yeah. and one of his books, um, uh, prescription drugs that don't work and natural cures that do and he taught that's his little phrase that you, when I said it I was repeating him yeah. you know all drugs stop enzyme reactions so yeah. find a natural way folks yeah makes sense to me mm -hmm. and the second article is about processed meat declaring too dangerous for human consumption and really what this is about is that the World Cancer Research Fund did a uh, detailed study of about uh, 7,000 clinical studies over the, that have taken place over the years, and from that they determined that the between big, diet and cancer, yeah, between, between diet and cancer, the biggest link is in processed foods, processed meats. And you know, guys, those of you, you know, really get the newsletter because there's really valuable links that give you further information on this stuff. But you know, 
there's some simple rules. You want to always read your ingredient labels. Don't buy anything made with sodium nitrate or monosodium glutamate. And just avoid eating your red meats in restaurants. And this is a really great yeah. tip, I think. Um, you know, you know that we believe that uh, red meat, when it's grass-fed and properly raised in a humane fashion, is a health food. However, really, you need to be using those as your meals that you cook at home because very rarely can you find this quality of meat in your restaurants. It's uh, The lucky thing is more and more is becoming available, but it is very, very difficult And the more you find. ask, the more they're going to bring it up in their meetings. Yes, hey, we're no getting a lot it. of questions for yeah. this. But, I mean, even some of the nicest restaurants that we have in our area don't carry grass-fed beef. No. Now they'll carry some nice Angus, and, you know, maybe periodically that's okay. Um, but seriously, guys, just try and avoid it. Yeah. And then the other thing I want you to be aware of is, um, you know, the key is to to help fight these diseases is eating an antioxidant with uh, with your food. Um, you know, we'll kind of jump back because we were just talking about cholesterol. You know, I I believe that cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. Cholesterol is the innocent bystander. Cholesterol is there trying to repair the damage done to your arteries right. from sugar, processed foods, and quite frankly, a vitamin or antioxidant deficiency, vitamin C. You've heard me say the only people that don't make their own vitamin C are guinea pigs and uh, humans, and both suffer heart attacks quite frequently. So simple solution, um, take a whole food vitamin C. I have my people take, uh, take one that's a nice blend of camu camu and amla berry, great research. That have yeah, and power vitamin, C vitamin C you can C. take just about, I mean, you don't have to stop that for anything when you're going into surgeries or anything like that. That's one of the... It's just yeah, running it's, around it, protecting you. So yeah. what I do many times uh, is have people carry them in their little cases. So you kind of think of it. Uh, you know, there's, there's free radicals in your food because yeah. of the cook. So why not throw an antioxidant in? You know, maybe at the same time you're taking a digestive yeah. support. No, in the chat room, Marshall, I was asking that, uh, and they, he said, "Welcome back. Thank, Thank you very you, much." Uh, is there any difference between kosher salt and table salt, other than grain size? Well, co the only thing kosher really means is that it's been passed uh, kind of a uh, religious test. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's been blessed, and supposedly the food is supposed to be better. Uh, the only thing I would say is that uh, you need to look for uh, you know better salts, and yes. those are the Himalayan. Uh, Sea salts, uh, salts mm -hmm. from ancient seabeds are uh, where you get your trace minerals. Yeah. Ninety-seven minerals. See a lot of this. Ta you know, table salt is an absolute. The only thing it's really good for is maybe using as a as a scrub to clean your toilet or your sink or something because mm -hmm. it's sodium chloride and it's um, it's it's toxic. That's associated with the fluid retention. And you know, we hear doctors say not to eat salt. It's what they use in processed food. On the other hand, the Himalayan. And the Celtic salts, as, as Nico was discussing, the ancient seabeds, the salts produced under pressure are wonderful foods. Literally, add some salt to your water bottle. You're actually going to lose your fluid because your body is so happy to be getting these healthy minerals. Yeah. It uh, has a completely different reaction in your body than your uh, iodized salt uh, from your supermarket. Mm -hmm. Even the sea salts uh, are questionable. I would go into the Himalayan salts and, go. you know, you start to become a little more connoisseur. I have uh, several different salts in my it's cabinet. Like, it's like yeah. wine collectors. But you don't use it a lot. I mean, I use it mm -hmm. mostly in cooking, mm -hmm. and I, I very seldom add it to food after I cook it. I do believe in adding uh, if, as much as a half a teaspoon a day to your water bottles over time. You know, you, you don't taste it, you know, during the day. It's a great way to get your, your minerals up. Yeah. So. Electrolytes. Yeah, yeah, we have another question, too. Yeah, uh, CoQ10 should be taken with some fat. Any comment? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, CoQ10 <laughs> itself is a fat. It's a fat-soluble nutrient. Yeah. So anytime we talk about, there are a lot of nutrients that, that work better with fat. Yeah. It's fat and protein, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, hey, what? That makes sense, doesn't yeah, it? Kind yes, of what of we say. So, you know, yes, exactly. Um, a lot of your fat-soluble nutrients do much better when you have them with a fat fat meal. So pop it yeah. in the morning when you're having your eggs. And yeah, and fat. most medications, too. I, I know I was uh, for my... Uh a thumb injury. I was taking some pain pills, and they always work better if you have something in your stomach. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether it's a little uh, coconut oil or whether you eat something light and then take the medicine, it just seems to absorb faster. And something that's popping into my head because yeah. we're talking about anti, you know, or you know, we're talking about nutrients that do better with a fat environment is, you know, the anti-inflammatory turmeric. Um, is it's recommended to take it, maybe mix it in some coconut and then take a teaspoon of it mm -hmm. or mix it in with a, you know, think about the curries of the Indian cultures, you know, they're creamy uh, turmeric, 
uh, you know, the turmeric works better now. You know, yeah, that's a plant. Well, another thing root, about uh, the fats, uh, a lot of these really healthy fats dissolve, and they don't even go into the liver or pancreas or anything. They go right into the bloodstream, carrying the nutrients where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So it bypasses a lot of the cleaning systems that we have that uh, aren't necessary because the fat is so pure and good. That's what MCT oil, mm -hmm. it, it goes right into your... The active uh, form yeah. that's in coconut exactly. oil. Yeah. So. Yeah. Those, those things, everything works better with fat, folks. Thanks and, for your questions. Yeah. We like them. Okay, and then the next article is uh, the benefits of coffee. And it's a, a pretty large article. Uh, I thought it was fascinating, so I think you should look at it. And you're, they're really talking about the benefits have long-range effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's and many all, of them. In all type mortality, pretty significant study this article talks about. Yeah. Um, but in general, you know, we think coffee's been vindicated, but let's 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 get down to the nuts and bolts again you know if we're going and having these coffee milkshakes you know those caramel macchiatas or whatever at starbucks <laughs> well, with a lot watch, of artificial sugars yeah you watch them make it and the first thing they do is they put a scoop of whatever in you know if there's uh, some kind of special so, uh, uh, some flavoring special in there boy they scoop and it's a whole big scoop of sugar and then of course they add the other sugars and the other things and by the time uh, you get out of there you've got a drink that's mostly sugar and, and i want to make this point too uh, you know, coffee is one of the most heavily sprayed crops. So, again, it comes back to buying coffee that's consciously, humanely grown, mm -hmm. um, you know, from free trade areas. I mean, it's all, you know, when you get things from the right sources, you're going to get the yeah. good vibe. It's going to benefit it's your fruit. body. It's a fruit tree. Mm -hmm. It's the nut from a fruit tree. And, uh, you know, the soil has to be good. The conditions have to be good. They have to be treated right. And then they shouldn't be sprayed with stuff. It should be an organic, really dark, rich soil. Uh, I love coffee. <laughs> I, well, I want to I wouldn't say a point, too. Well, when yes. I was over there in Austria, because mm -hmm. it was raining and 30 degrees, we're not used to that being in Florida, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, everyone there, they just... Uh, meals, you know, gathering around the table and talking. So, uh, but they drink espresso a lot, and yeah, so you know, we I, like I want to talk a little bit more about that because I'm, I'm, I notice that it kind of keeps a real even keel, the espresso. Well, but again, let's uh, discuss about why. Uh, first of all, the uh, the number here is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. You can give us a call. Remember, you can always reach N uh, Nico or Page at Nico or Page at tfnn dot mm -hmm. com. And of course, uh, everything uh, that we do here is uh, available uh, on our uh, archive shows, and uh, some of the videos are available on Living a Primal Lifestyle dot com. You can mm -hmm. go to iTunes and use them as a podcast. So. All all that stuff is really good. And remember, the Health Signals newsletter, two issues a month for only $10 a month. You can pick that up, uh, uh, you know, on the web here. And just go to on your newsletter. You'll see Health Signals and subscribe. You get 30 days, no charge, right? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So uh, Paige and I will be back in uh, a few minutes, folks. So please stick around and give us a call to 877-927-6648. And we're here to take them. We'll be right back. heard Nico DeHaan as co-host of Living a Primal Lifestyle, which airs every Friday at noon Eastern Time on TFNN, and would like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus Prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the doll because the doll is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back to the show, folks. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, this is Nico and Paige on Living a Primal Lifestyle. Choking on myself here. Uh, you know, we were talking about... Uh, coffee before the break and what the difference is between uh, the different types of coffee and you mentioned espresso and mm -hmm. I usually do espresso and uh, I find that espresso first of all the grind is very very uh, uh, fine fine mm -hmm. uh, so you get more nutrients in it uh, uh, with a smaller amount right uh, and it's under high pressure steam so you get uh, really uh, for the bang for your buck is a lot more a uh, little less caffeine I'm not sure how much less but maybe half as much mm -hmm. that's of course, what I think I heard yeah but uh, you're using I think a shot is an ounce to an ounce and a half or something like mm -hmm. that so uh, I usually do a double Mm -hmm. So I figure it is as much in there as a cup of coffee, but so I only the, do it a couple times a day. So I mean, you look at the portion, though, you know, mm -hmm. of an espresso, uh, and, and now you understand how we're getting into trouble when people are drinking these. They're going and getting the double, you know, sixteen, twenty ounce cups of coffee at yeah. the coffee shop. So, well, the know. antioxidants in coffee is, uh, are really strong and they're really protective uh, for our body. Dr. Uh, Ray Pete, uh -huh. you know who I love, yeah. he says that he loves coffee. And he says that coffee is the main source of antioxidant for most of the American people. Like 80% of the American wow. people get their, because it's true, you know, a lot of people don't uh, eat yeah. fresh fruits in their, if yeah, they're drinking so their they're coffee, getting coffee, they're getting yeah. the polyphenols, which yeah. are very, very good. Um, you know, one other thing, uh, many of you know that I use homeopathy, um, and I recommend homeopathic uh, remedies, and it is important to space your coffee, and it can impact and antidote the uh, homeopathic remedies. So... 
sometimes we have to be aware of that, cut back, space it. Um, so I just want people to be aware of that. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it. And speaking of uh, fat or oil, uh, helping to get the nutrients in there. When well, we use Bulletproof Coffee or the Tiger Brew, mm -hmm. then you're putting uh, grass-fed uh, uh, cheese uh, butter in there or some MCT oil or coconut oil, and that all helps it get right into the bloodstream. Yeah, we kind of got to think about it that way, so. where it's a source of antioxidants. Yes. If you buy it that's a purified, you know, a pure form that's not heavily sprayed or heavily roasted or... Uh, filled with pesticides, uh, you use it as a vehicle to get your nice, healthy, saturated fats of butter, coconut oil, or both. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, I think maybe some of the drawbacks could be outweighed. And these researchers are showing that that all-cause mortality uh, is is better when coffee drinkers. Yeah. So, drink up. Now, Tom was uh, working out with me this week, and he uh, brought to my attention this interesting article in the New York Times about fighting cervical cancer uh, in uh, foreign countries. This came out of Thailand, but they were using the therapy in many countries, including India and uh, Zimbabwe and mm -hmm. uh, Guyana, uh, and it's uh, using vinegar. I, and, you know, it goes back to the history of the vinegar douche. Mm -hmm. And they're really solving a lot of problems with these people. Uh, over here in America, we get pap smears and things like that. Mm -hmm. Over there, they're doing a completely different thing and finding great, great results. So I recommend you uh, uh, look at this article, and then if you want to do more research on that, you can. And also, you know, checking there's some protocols using, again, uh, fat-soluble vitamin A and, and folic acid. I don't want to say folic acid because that's a synthetic folate, the power of folate in uh -huh. reversing cervical cancer. So these are all protocols that can be used, but what's happening is, is we're getting a lot of women going in for these procedures and, you know, there's strains of these HPV viruses that are rather innocuous and, and other ones that linger on and, and have been associated with cancer. So it's nice to know there's things you can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about uh, organic uh, gardening and natural pest control and disease control. Mm -hmm. And I f found this great book uh, that is the Natural Pest and Disease Control. Uh, that's the title of it. Uh, and uh, you can get it on. By uh, Fern Marshall Bradley and yeah. Barbara W. Ellis and Deborah L. Martin. A nice collaboration. Natural Pest and Disease Control. I think you guys remember I was talking about the Roundup, spraying yeah. the Roundup. And we really have to... Uh, I liked, I thought Nico offered a really great solution. Just get down on your hands and knees and pull it and weeds, <laughs> you know. And <laughs> doing some labor, folks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this is all just more of what we're saying. You know, the new health care is self-care. You've got to take the step and get yourself educated um, and, and start doing some of these things that are going to keep you and your family safe. Yeah, and uh, doing uh, it to yourself, great, uh, but also your house and your property, why not? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's make it all safe and uh, the best that you can make it, uh, who knows? And years mm -hmm. to come, you may rely for it for your food, maybe growing some food. Because, well, and I'd like, to, to. I'd like to have uh, one of my friends, Jay Hamley, on here. She's mm -hmm. an organic gardener. She, she works in this area okay. uh, with people and teaches so them how to grow buzz. their own food. She'd be, I think everybody really enjoy her. So we'll, we'll yeah. work on getting her on the show. Yeah. Then there's an article on how much sugar is in there. And this really takes our common, uh, well, we got a break coming up. Anyway, a bunch of pro products, and it actually shows you how much sugar is in each one in the article. So really cool article, and uh, you need to look at that. We'll be right back, folks. Uh, don't forget you can call us at 877-927-6648. And Paige and I will be back momentarily. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Bessel Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Bessel's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Bessel's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back to the show, folks. It's Nico and Paige on Living a Primal Lifestyle. And give us a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, we were talking about the newsletter. And I've got a huge section in here about natural uh, alternatives for infection with links of where to go and uh, deeper information about that. So mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Two pages of that. I've got some great recipes in here. Bora Bora fi Fireballs. Oh, it's so good. And uh, Crock-Pot Italian Beef. And then some great exercises. And uh, then I have our pages for our vendors and some primal reading and some information. And on our last page, under our picture, I have Dr. Dwight Lundell and that whole talk about statins. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he really effects. came right out and so that's shook that. it up because he's a famous doctor. So He was a Surgeon General. He was yeah. a Surgeon General, right? Yes, mm. exactly right. Okay, so um, we're... Well, you know, we were talking about... Um, uh, what can we learn from breast milk? That article. And yeah. I think it's kind of interesting is that people don't realize really um, the components of breast milk. It's really over, it's almost close to 50% fat. Well, we fat. try to find information that makes sense on mm -hmm. what we should be eating and mm -hmm. naturally because we all start on breast milk, or we should. Right. Uh, that's a good place. Uh, now to we're give not you suggesting that everybody needs to be on breast milk. No, now, no. But we want as to look much at fun as that might be. Uh, <laughs> no, we're, what we're talking about is it gives you an indication of maybe the ratio of the types of uh, proteins and fats and carbohydrates and what where this protein actually comes from and how it works in our body because this is how we start our life. Exactly. And we were kind of looking at it because there's uh, this article is kind of cute. It says, uh, "Warning: This post contains math." 
<laughs> but it really does. He kind of goes through the rationale of, um, you know, you know, of course, a baby has a higher need for because of the extreme growth they're going through as opposed to a full-grown adult. Yes. But I think there's some powerful message here um, that, you know, some of the people that are still having a problem, it's kind of a fat phobia, that fat is so important for structural growth. Yeah. Um, you know, so I thought that was a pretty good good article, giving you an idea of what you should and shouldn't be eating. You know? Yeah, I may even include this in one of my future uh, mm -hmm. uh, newsletters, just because it is a fascinating research. You know, it's a... a okay, so listen to this. So understanding okay. the macronutrient ratios of breast milk in context of the body it is designed for gives up a good idea of what ratios are healthy for an adult human. So this long article kind of summarizes into, this works out to 17 to 27% protein, 0 to 7% carbohydrates, and 66 to 83 percent fat. So such a diet would almost always be ketogenic. Very metabolically damaged people may not handle even 38 grams of carbs. So I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, again, because it goes into the whole point that, you know, we can take and make carbohydrates from excess proteins. Yeah. Through glucogenesis. Yeah, so uh, if the baby gets no carbohydrates from the milk, which there's very little in there. Very, means, that's the key. There's very little. There's very little, up to 7%, mm -hmm. uh, which means that uh, if she has enough protein or he, then uh, it can make it from that. And that's what happens with us, too. That's why Eskimos do quite well. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm doing pretty good, because I don't eat a lot of that myself. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exactly. So a uh, great, great article. And... Uh, it was pretty fascinating. You know, one of the things that uh, I really f find fascinating is really how much fat there is in there. I mean, 80, 67 to 80 percent. And it, I kind of am in that range myself. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I find that the less protein is better too. So, I I think I've I've always consumed more protein than I should, and as I'm going along, I'm finding that I'm eating less and less of the protein. But I think too, so, as we get a little older. Mm -hmm. um, We've had damage to our digestive fire, um, our ability to break down the proteins. We see that a lot with acid reflux. You know, we've talked a little bit about how GERD and acid reflux usually is a sign that you have too low a stomach acid. Mm -hmm. I think that happens because we spent all these years before we knew eating grain-based diets. So our, our yeah. stomachs became alkaline. Yeah, We're because no the hydrochloric breaking. acid doesn't digest that really well. It kind of sits on the uh, sidelines and starts to ferment. Mm -hmm. Once it's fermented, then the hydrochloric acid can start to digest it better. Yeah. So it actually has to, that food, all your vegetables and everything like that, if you've got protein in there, the protein is going to start digesting. The rest of the stuff is kind of sitting in there waiting its turn mm -hmm. because the protein and the fats have to digest first. So that stuff is sitting on the side and it's fermenting. That's what it's supposed to do. That's so let's what it talk does. about food combined. That just made me think of yeah. that. Okay. Okay. Um, and I've gone, you know, back and forth on this idea. Um, you know, a lot of people may or may not know that some people who uh, support food combining would more or less it would be fruits always eaten by themselves, yeah. particularly melons always eaten completely by themselves. Other fruits could eat, be eaten in conglomeration no more than two hours before you have a protein. And you never have a protein. Your proteins can either be with a with a vegetable. Well, that's it. Proteins and vegetables can go together. Yeah. Um, vegetables can also go with a starch, but you never have a protein with a starch. Okay. So that's kind of the philosophy of food combining. And when people are having some digestive issues, sometimes that can give them a clue as to you know what's bothering them and maybe make things easier. But when you really think about it, and you think of the body wisdom, mm -hmm. like you were just saying. Yeah, you gotta you gotta look at what is being digested first. Well, naturally, being a predator, if we're out hunting, mm -hmm. we're gonna be eating that kill, right. Drink, drinking the blood, taking some of the fat and eating that, uh, and the muscle stu stuff that you can carry, you take back to the village. The importance of the hydrochloric acid because it's like the surveillance team of whatever came into your stomach. It, you know, at a pH of one or something. It's killing yeah, it, everything. It's it breaking it, it down. Yeah, it takes care of it. It's the thing that saves our life all the time mm -hmm. because it can pretty much take care of just about anything that you throw in there. So we kind of, by way of, uh, of the diet that we're talking about, is more healthful, i.e. eliminating the grains, the glutens, yeah. the well, starches. I, I, we, 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 by way, kind of do this naturally yeah. in this diet. Yeah. But 
how do you feel about having pineapple with a piece of meat? Think about well, the bromelain, which yeah. helps to digest. And uh, I would say... The islanders knew that. Yeah, I would say uh, pineapple would be a great dessert about an hour or so after you eat the uh, protein. Mm -hmm. But... But Traditional actually, food combiners would say that's a no-no. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess everyone has well, to you can also do it uh, is, uh, is baste the meat with some pineapple and get the juices in there to combine together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what I'm trying to yeah. say? In, in the natural health world, a lot of people talk about the traditional food combining. Some of that would be no-nos. But then again, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, why wouldn't I want these enzymes to work together? you know, bromelain to start to break yeah. down protein, uh, you know, papaya. Yeah. Um, but remember, then you're, then you're using the uh, bromelain or the, uh, the fruit in with the cooking. You wouldn't use it, just take some, uh, you know, uh, and eat them together, even though you haven't cooked them together. I would say combine them mm -hmm. in the cooking process, and that makes it, you know, yeah, makes it a lot sense. better. Uh, my suggestion would be to eat it, you know, eat the protein, then maybe wait a while, and then eat the uh, fruit. Right. And Let then, the bromelain come in. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just telling you, in the traditional food in combining, the they, they tell you, oh, no, you can't do that. You're... Your fruit's going to ferment because it's yeah, sitting there. Because it's sitting there doing nothing. Mm -hmm. you know, while the uh, they would say, have it serve an appetizer of pineapple mm -hmm. an hour before, before you serve your meat. Yeah, it's, po it's possible you could do that because that will digest about an hour. Yeah. So it'll and, be and, gone and, by the time. But the whole idea is, is if you want to use it to help you. Yeah, but if you if you're digesting a piece of meat, it takes about an hour or two. Mm -hmm. You're well in a, into an hour. You're well into digesting that, so your body's into that rhythm of, uh, you know, burning fat and eat, and digesting. Mm -hmm. And you throw something else in there, it's just going to go kind of along for the ride. That's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah. So it depends what it is, too. Well, I'm starting to have this idea, and that, that's why I said that. I hope it's not yeah. too confusing. Is is that um, I think our bodies know what to do. I don't think that it uh, was designed so that we had to worry about it, because I think we get signs and symptoms if it isn't sitting well. And, um, you know, uh, traditional cultures had decided to marinate meat with pineapple. There was a reason for that, to help start the breakdown process. Yeah. Um, so I'm not a strict food combinist, but I'm all for trying what might work for you. Yeah. What, what works might. for me is eating the protein first, mm -hmm. and then I'll have a little of something after that, and it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. so. Sounds good. You know, I was reading this article, and uh, NASA uh, is backing this 3D food printer to feed growing populations. And I guess, the, you know, you've heard about the 3D printers where you're printing guns and printing things, and it sounds pretty handy. Uh, of course, this brings me to think about Star Trek and the, mm -hmm. uh, their uh, little uh, food. Well, explain to them what, about what this is, about okay. the 3D printer. Uh, well, the contractors uh, ex uh, ultimately expect to see a 3D printer in every kitchen replacing food with powder and oil cartridges loaded into a printer to create custom meals for an individual's diet and nutritional needs. So we're what, really you talking... Print, you, so you're going to print a picture of the food and that's no, no. going to... No, a 3D printer actually prints the object. So it's We say, are really getting woo-woo here. Well, say you want a cup of coffee and you don't even have the cup, you would print the cup and the coffee and it would be in here in front of you and it would be hot and everything. It's holograms. It's similar. Holographic. Yeah. yeah, but this is what's coming. This is what they're talking about. Mm. You can have like a pizza printer. Contractor has competition in the food of the Didn't future category. That's okay. A Missouri-based company is currently researching 3D bioprinters, while a doctor in the Netherlands is testing the use of stem cells to grow your future meals. You know, let's talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about processed foods. First of all, it's a powder to begin with, so you know it's processed in the beginning. So Why is there this fascination with, with this... Uh, I mean, this is just... Well, I think this for research and going into space, uh, you know, the problem with storing food and growing food in space and things like that, then I think this te technology may, may be valuable. I th to Contractor feed. says the current food system can't meet a growing population's needs and people must have an open mind. Yeah, you Let's know... Let's open our mind to growing some really good food yeah, and why some don't wild we just, animals. And, uh, right, yeah, and, and this kind of... I just want to jump in on this uh, article, and I haven't read the whole links to this, but... Um, it was a little bit of touching on how uh, Russia warns Obama, um, you know, from what I understand, mm -hmm. Russia is very upset, upset. Uh, oh. Putin is very upset with, you know, Obama's support with of GMO, GMO foods. foods and Monsanto and, um, 
you know, it may very well be people, you know, we're made out to think that uh, they're the big scary guys, but maybe they're really people that care more about people. I'm we, starting to think that all so the time. We get so little information about them that we don't really know, do we? Yeah, so, you know, we're talking about what's going on in our country. I mean, I really want, you know, we talk about GMOs, and, you know, we, I want to encourage you all to stay abreast of what's going on, Google what's going on in that. Do understand that as our society and our world is changing in the political sphere, you know, if you control the food, you control the people. So why is there such a push? Um, you know, why has President Obama just kind of kneeled down to whatever Monsanto wants? Why is Monsanto on our fo uh, food czar, you know, in his cabinet? What is going on? Why does he have a beautiful house in Hawaii? That's what somebody was telling me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that. Uh, someone was telling me that, you know, he's all, got a beautiful place to retire after his presidency courtesy of well, Monsanto. Well, the thing is, powerful people and powerful companies uh, like Monsanto and all these other large companies have a big stake in uh, feeding the world. They all right, so I want to read you just some highlights okay. of this thing. A friend of mine gave me this, and I, I, I haven't vetted all of it out, but it just gets me in the gut, you know, and it says, the shocking minutes related to President Putin's meeting this past week with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry revealed the Russian leader's extreme outrage over the Obama regime's continued protection of global seed and plant biogenetic giants Syngenta and Monsanto in the face of, uh, um, of uh, so this is cut out, but um, according to these minutes released in the Kremlin today by the Minister of Natural Resources and Environment of the Russian Federation, Putin was so incensed over the Obama regime refusal to discuss this grave matter that he refused for three hours to even meet with Kerry, who had traveled to Moscow on a scheduled diplomatic mission. But then he relented so as not to cause an even greater rift between the two nations. Um, you know, from what I understand, he's very concerned. Um, there's undisputable evidence, he says, that, you know, the U.S., Monsanto, Syngenta are destroying our planet's bee population and which, if left unchecked, could destroy our world's ability to grow enough food to feed its, feed its population. So is there possibly a plan there, you know? Well, no, there's uh, a we, lot, of, lot of companies are, or a lot of countries are actually outlawing the, those seeds. Oh, I know. And you're hearing so, about the victories, guys, yeah. all the time, countries that are outlining the seeds. But there's just such a sinister plan. And I think that's really what it is, is that, you know, control the people by controlling well, the, the seeds. The whole concept of uh, not allowing plants to seed which is what, what Monsanto wants, no seeds available unless you buy it off of them or a company similar to them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, I think, is unethical because the way farmers always uh, did things is their plants would make the seeds and then they would, uh, you know, you didn't have to buy seeds every year. I mean, I just want to say that I feel like, you know, we're all going about our lives and this is happening behind the scenes and, and uh and well, that's so, the way governments work. And yeah. All these companies, they, you know, that's what they've always done. So this is going to happen. We just have to be aware of it so we can not buy those products. And hopefully there, there won't come a time when we don't have a choice. See this table? You can feed a family of four in a garden this size. Our right. friend Jay can tell us how to do it. But what if everybody, and you know, did that? And we know there's people that don't have a yard, and then there's buildings. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people... When I was going through the train in Europe, you saw these little gardens. I mean, there's people that actually rent space, and then each little space that they have has a little When you know, I grew up, everybody shed. had everybody a garden. Everybody had their own garden. Yeah. yeah. And, and we can again. And with the technology today, folks, you can have gardens just about anywhere, inside, outside, and buildings on top of roofs. And, you know, there's a lot of possibilities to do that. So we'll be back, folks, in a couple minutes. It's 877-927-6648. I pick up my Health Signals newsletters, brand new copy out tonight, and it'll get the information you need to keep healthy, wealthy, and wise. Paige and I will be right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. That's right, folks, and test my Health Signals newsletter especially. Uh, go up to the uh, top of the page there. Health Signals is right there under newsletters, and it's only $10 a month. You get two excellent issues every single Good month. Good stuff. Yes. Number here is 877-927-6648. You know, I never use uh, any lip balm or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I was reading this article about... Yeah, I uh, sent you that article because I tell you what, um, you know, we talk with people all the time and, you know, there's like, oh, I can't afford organic foods or anything. Well, I can tell you a way you can really afford them, I mean, especially with women, okay, you tigresses out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you start to get rid of all of your cosmetics that you're buying at these department stores you can buy the best yeah, food because beauty's really from the inside yeah, out no guys it's an inside job and this article came across um, uh, my computer called unsafe lipsticks and lip balm and um, just to give you a little background um, uh, re researchers have known for a long time that lip products may contain potentially hazardous materials and in 2011 the FDA came out and said okay um, you know we found lead in 400 different lipsticks that we tested. <laughs> uh, but the agency wasn't too concerned. Now remember, the FDA doesn't work for you and I. The FDA works for the companies, the manufacturers. And their comment was, lipstick as a product intended for topical use with limited absorption is ingested only in very small quantities. We do not consider the lead levels we found in lipstick to be a safety concern. But researchers at UCLA um, 
uh, UC Berkeley, uh, weren't really satisfied with that, and they continued to investigate the lipstick ingredients. And just this month, the team issued a report indicating that they found not only lead, but also cadmium, chromium, aluminum, titanium, and four other not-so-nice metals in 32 different varieties of lipsticks they tested. Um, and they found that they were, they were in worrisome amounts. So my point here is, is guys, you know, we've always told you what you uh, put on your skin, you do absorb. And the FDA making a comment that it's not ingested, I, I want you to think of your skin as your mouth. And anything that you put on your skin, you have to be willing to put in your mouth, put on your yeah. tongue. Um, so there's a couple things I want to tell you. Um, uh, I hope to maybe be able to, you know, source some. I'm actually working on something, you know, uh, some lipsticks because this is this is um, one of the few things that people apply two to three times a day, and they're licking the lips, and you guys are kissing women with, with lipstick on. So um, let's start to take a look at this, and remember that, like most cosmetics, uh, the lipstick ultimately gets absorbed through the skin, um, but it also is getting ingested. Um, yeah, in fact, there are so, so many of these. There's uh, people who are real enthusiastic about reapplying stuff like 14 times a day mm -hmm. may get as much as 83 milligrams of the uh, lipstick. Mm -hmm. uh, which perspective, uh, like uh, some uh, green tea, will have 24 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. So it shows you milligrams. That's so, so yeah, and again, stuff. you know, guys, we can't really be relying on the FDA to keep us safe because they're 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 being pulled in a different direction to support uh, industry. You mean there's gambling going on here? <laughs> so let's and and you guys, lead is not the only thing. I mean, chromium has been indicated as been a known carcinogen. That's high levels of chromium uh, can is linked to stomach tumors and lung cancer. So we're going to look at. Um, Getting clean and um, no, you know. This just talks about lipstick. Imagine applying all. Oh, the other all the makeups, makeups and, and everything, guys. This is what I'm telling you. Uh, one of the first things you should do is start going to the Environmental Working Group, EWG.org, and start looking up your cosmetics, your favorite cosmetics, and see how they rate. They they covered a lot of them, and and then just try and streamline back. I mean, like we tell you here, a, a thing of coconut oil, you. Can you can eat it, you can put it in your bulletproof coffee, you can cook your eggs in it, you can put it all over your skin. Uh, you can actually make makeup with it, and, and we'll work on that. So I'm glad I'm not a woman with uh, all that tough. stuff. It's yeah, tough. It's tough. It really is. You guys are hard. I really feel sorry for you. Um, <laughs> That's so, much, really. so be careful, guys. And, uh, again, visit the Environmental Working Group and check out Safe Cosmetics. Yep. Well, that's the show there. Boy, this went by fast. Sure did. We have so much to cover because we've yeah. been about been out. Yeah. Well, we got more to cover next week. So, uh, in fact, I've got a guest, uh, Milo Ramirez, who is a uh, chiropractor, real interesting guy. Uh, him and I have talked several times, so we'll be back with him next week. Have a great Thanks week. a lot. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.